that Robinhood is shifting some of the blame here to Wall Street's back-end trading systems. CEO Vlad Tenev said in a blog post that what's known as, or he called out what's known as T plus two. That's essentially the two-day period it takes for someone to make a trade and for the clearinghouse to confirm that on the other end. Tenev said that investors were angry and concerned, which was an unintended byproduct of what he calls the antiquated settlement process. He says the system is, quote, ripe for change. Part of why Robinhood had to stop allowing customers to buy names like GameStop last week were those higher re uh, requirements for deposits. That went up tenfold, according to Robinhood, with a total $3 billion needed as collateral on Thursday morning. What Robinhood is arguing would be for real-time settlement. Sources I'm talking to say it's not entirely clear who would be responsible for changing this. One fix could be for the SEC to let customer deposits count towards those requirements. Robinhood was able to raise a few billion dollars pretty quickly. VC backers tell me there was plenty of demand and that the convertible debt round was also oversubscribed. There are, those investors are mostly betting on Robinhood's user growth. One tells me that new accounts far outweighed any attrition that they saw last week. And on top of all of this, Robinhood is launching its biggest ad campaign yet, a Super Bowl commercial. That's meant to bring in new customers. Some, though, have argued that keeping up with that rapid customer growth has been part of the issue for Robinhood. Melissa, back to you. It's just interesting, Kate, though, because while they're seeking new customers with an ad like the Super Bowl, which reaches so many millions of households uh, on that single day and that single moment in time, um, you know, as it increases customers and as it lifts restrictions on trading, as it offers fractional trading for some of these so-called meme stocks, GameStop, as well as AMC, at any moment, the clearinghouses could require additional capital. I mean, they're almost exacerbating that situation um, uh, of the need for a potential overnight capital raise once again. Right, right. And that is the user growth has been part of the issue here. And a lot of their users, the demographic tends to be younger. They tend to be the type of traders that might be on Reddit. They might be bidding up some of these stocks. So it is a big question here. Can they handle bringing in all of these new customers? And that has been part of the issue. The, the VC investors have looked at that customer growth and said that is the type of growth that a social media platform might see. And it's the most popular fintech app and app overall. You saw it number one in the app store. They said that was really the silver lining in all of this, that despite the chaos of last week, this is still an immensely popular app and program. And for that reason, they said that they were ready to double down and spend as much money as possible to get more exposure to Robinhood. And also, the convertible debt deal gives them about a 30% uh, discount to the market price when this company goes public. So it also seems like those VC investors are betting that this is a more near-term IPO than we might have thought even last week. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.